Enabled by the support of NECA IBEW 48. Last weekend, Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson and singer Sierra toured Portland by helicopter, looking at potential sites for a Major League Baseball stadium. The husband and wife are both investing in the Portland Diamond Project, the group working to build a stadium and lure a team to the Rose City. We're excited about uh, the potential of, of bringing a, a Major League Baseball team here to such a great city, a thriving city, a city that's growing like crazy. How realistic is this bid? And when, if ever, could we see a major league team in Portland? Tonight, we sit down with Mike Barrett with the Portland Diamond Project to discuss baseball in Portland. From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. We could be singing that old favorite song during a seventh inning stretch at a major league baseball game in Portland someday soon. We do have the Hillsborough Hops, a minor league team, and the Portland Pickles, a collegiate wood bat baseball team. And they're a lot of fun to watch, but there are a lot of folks who feel Portland deserves a major league baseball team. And there's a strong effort building to make that happen with the Portland Diamond Project. I know you've heard it before, past efforts to bring a team here have failed, but the Portland Diamond Project says this time is different. However, critics question whether it is the right time as the city faces major challenges like affordable housing and homelessness. Joining me now to tell us more about the project, welcome to my guest, one of the managing partners of the project, former Blazers broadcaster, Mike Barrett. Welcome to Straight Talk, it's nice to have you here. Thanks for having me, it's been uh, an exciting time. I bet, well, you know, baseball fans have had their hopes dashed before. Is this really gonna happen? We, we think so. I mean, as we've said since the beginning, um, a little bit of the Apollo 13, failure is not an option. Um, so, no, we feel good about it. And to see how far we've come in really, um, just over a year, really, since we really started grinding. It's been 16, 18 months since we sat down and kind of sat around and talked about what this could look like and how we could bring it together and who we would need to do this and kind of started down this road. And, um, you know, we talked about it over the weekend. I think we were almost on our one year anniversary of actually being a company when um, Russell Wilson and Sierra, which I know we're going to talk about, when they um, threw their influence, sizable influence behind us. So it's, it's crazy. It's been a year on one hand, but uh, on the other, we've, we've accomplished a lot in a year and not a lot of it publicly until recently, but um, there has been a lot of work behind the scenes to get to this point. Well, you're a one lot of left to do. Three people that are in this group, the Portland Diamond Project including uh, former Nike executive Craig Cheek and former state senator in Oregon, Jason Atkinson. How did this group come together? Well, it's, it's funny because we talk about at times when things calm down, the interesting way that we were all drawn together. You know, Craig was at Nike, as you said, for a long time. Craig ran North America. He ran Nike China. He signed Russell, signed some athletes, um, signed some of the Nike contracts with some of the major sports. I knew Craig through a friend, and I actually ended up at his house at a movie event. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. This has got to be 19, 20 months ago. And we talked about other stuff, film and movies, and we didn't really get to this. And then um, it came to my attention. He called me and said, hey, let's grab lunch. And he kind of threw this whole thing at me. And, and then I said, great, count me in, because I had just finished with the Blazers recently and was kind of going, what am I going to do now? which some people face in their lives. Um, and this was a way to kind of stay involved in sports, but to do something that, you know, has massive legacy potential, not for me, but to be part of the group that does this and to takes, and that, you know, takes this on, that was too great a challenge to pass up. And I had opportunities to stay in what I was doing, both, uh, you know, in the league or in sports, and this was too good. I thought, I could easily go do one of those things, but this was an opportunity again that was just too great to pass up. Now, Jason, 
As you mentioned, he was a four-term senator in Oregon, and I got to know Jason a little bit before Craig, and we started working on some film projects together, because Jason was a filmmaker, is a filmmaker, and worked on the movie A River Between Us when he did the Klamath River restoration in southern Oregon, which to this date is still the largest restoration project in U.S. history. Um, and he's pretty amazing in, in, in all that he has done and as many angles as he has. But he was kind of the perfect guy because of his relationships politically, um, governmentally, because we know that's going to be a big haul here. I was more the side where um, maybe a little bit better, better known in the public space, certainly in Portland. And, well, let and me hopefully jump in, in here because I want to find yes. out more about uh, Russell Wilson and Sierra. These are your silent partners that were revealed this last weekend. How did they get involved? Craig, as I mentioned, signed Russell when he was with Nike, and uh, we let Russell know what was going on. Craig did um, recently, and Russell kept emailing and saying, I got to hear more about this because Russell's a big time baseball fan. He played baseball in college. He was drafted twice, went to spring training with the Yankees this last year. So we drove up there, and it must have been May 11th is when Craig and I decided to, at the last minute, Russell sent an email and said, I have nothing going tonight. He did, but he said, I want to get you guys in. So we went up and sat down. It was Mark Rogers, Russell's agent, Russell, Craig and I, and we ended up talking for two hours. And five minutes in, we knew that he was going to be a part of things. He ended up pitching us rather than us pitching him, which and was And they really came cool. down last weekend, and they took a tour, mm -hmm. a helicopter tour of some possible locations, and then you held a news conference. And uh, let's hear what Russell Wilson had to say about why he's in, interested in investing in a baseball team in Portland. Listen, this isn't just a, a hooray thing and see you later type of thing. We're dedicated to it and, and making sure that, um, you know, the city's behind it, the kids are behind it, the, the people are behind it. And ultimately, uh, once it happens, you know, and hopefully we, we, we're, we're believers. You know, we, we don't, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not uh, pessimistic type of people. You know, we're, 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 we're firm believers and uh, we don't get into things if we don't think it's a great idea. We, we firmly, firmly believe this is a brilliant idea for this community. And he's think, thinking more than that, like getting youth involved, getting African-Americans involved in baseball. He has big plans, doesn't he? Yeah, huge. And he was saying that in our meeting as we're 15 minutes into it, and he's talking about building baseball academies and, and, and taking the game, as you said, to the, to, in certain cases, inner city, rural, African-American, minority communities. Um, and we're, we're sitting there saying this is all, if this were recorded, this would be our press conference. The guy needs no speaking points, you know. And we were talking about that on a conference call a couple of days before the media availability and we, uh, we you know we we're writing down some things for him to say and then we said we, he doesn't need this as he grabs the microphone as you heard and just takes off and uh, uncoached and says exactly the right thing. And his wife Sierra is an investor on her own mm -hmm. and she expressed that it was somewhat emotional to sign on as an owner and investor. Let's listen to what Sierra had to say. Well, I was kind of learning a lot more about female owners, and there's a very small list of ladies. And to know that I'm joining that incredible bunch is exciting, but to also know that perhaps this could inspire the next batch of women, you know, to kind of um, have this opportunity and open up the door even more for women, you know, t women that would follow after. So, um, honestly, it's very special. Um, it means a lot, you know, like I said, not only for my, not like I said, not only for myself, but for other young girls and young women around the world. So what's been the reaction to having Russell Wilson and Sierra investing in a baseball team coming to Portland? It's been terrific, and it's um, not been surprising necessarily. We knew that, um, and I'm glad that our announcement came the day before the news conference, because a lot of times, if this had come out and it had been three weeks, people would say, okay, you have the celebrity power behind it now, and that's really all that is. The fact that they were able to explain exactly what their role is and how invested they are, um, both not just financially, but also emotionally. And then to hear Sierra on the phone, we had a press con a conference call the day before, and she knew all these stats, you know, about how many women owners, how many minority women owners, and th this rare opportunity for her. And she sold hot dogs at Turner Field in Atlanta when she was young, so she knows the game, she loves the game. But the reaction nationally has been great. And, you know, whereas in the past it took stories a week to trickle back and back and forth across the country, now it's immediate. And so locally, the social impact too, been because great. Um, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler was kind of lukewarm on the idea. He, he talked about the serious challenges challenges the city faces with affordable housing and homelessness. But on Friday, he issued a statement that sounded a little more upbeat. And this is what he said on Friday. 
Watching the Portland Diamond Project steadily gain momentum over the past few months has been exciting, especially in light of today's announcement that Russell Wilson and Sierra have signed on as investors. Bringing a major league baseball team to Portland could have many extremely positive economic and social ramifications for the city. And I look forward to hearing more about the possibilities of this initiative. So Mike, do you think the tide is turning with the city a little bit? Yeah, I don't know about turning. I think that um, turning implies they weren't for it. And I think with, with Mayor Wheeler and, and even his staff, I think they, it was, we laid so much on them when we met with them, it took them a while to digest it. And we didn't, we told them, we don't expect you to come out right away. Think about this, don't, don't jump into this. Um, but it was great to hear the statement come out and we weren't surprised by that. Um, but we, we certainly want him and want their involvement, want their input, and that's, the great part of this group is, and the reason why this has been so enjoyable and really so fun is, nobody has any ego in this. We, we know it's gonna take a village, and when people call in and we get a lot of calls, how can I help is what a lot of them well, say. Well, let's talk about brass tacks, because you got the star power, which is great. Russell and Sierra have you know great narrative, but we're talking big money here. You're talking almost a billion dollars for a stadium, billion dollars for a team, infrastructure, parking garage, mm -hmm. the money to buy the real estate, the money for your campaign that you have right now. How much are Russell and Sierra investing? Um, you know, I'm gonna let them talk about that, but clearly from who we have in now, there is a majority part that will, will, will surface at some point. So who point. are they? Who are these other silent <laughs> partners? We, we, we can't discuss that How yet. How many are there? Um, there are partners and um, uh, when they are ready to make themselves known, um, I need to respect that at this point. It's got to so, be a lot of money, though. I mean, do you have enough people money. to foot $3 billion? And that's, that's the part that people have asked. I think when people want to know who they are, we knew that would happen. Um, all I can say is that they are for real and we don't have a financial problem. Because you're saying that, uh, well, somebody has deep pockets and you've said that you're not going to ask for any public money. That sounds too good to be true. Um, and that, and what, the way we've kind of framed that is when you say any public money, you, you mentioned infrastructure. Well, if you put a ballpark somewhere and then a street is changed and a stoplight goes in, that's technically public money. But in terms of new taxpayer money or going and doing a huge ask or a referendum or a bond, we have no plans to do that, fortunately. So let's talk about some of the possible locations that you've been looking at. There's the Portland Public School site, mm -hmm. which is in the Rose Quarter. The ESCO site in Industrial Northwest, where the old Vaughn Street Park was, opened in 1901 for the Portland Beavers. And last week we heard you talking about uh, the Port of Portland, uh, Terminal 2 on the waterfront. And we hear there's a fourth one that, that everyone kind of loves, but you're not talking about. Can you give <laughs> us any hints about that fourth place? I'll just tell you it's also on the water. It's also on the water because we heard Russell Wilson say that he can imagine <laughs> home runs flying yes. into the river. So we kind of got the idea he wants something on the water. Yes, I, I think ideally that's it. But we also know, and we said this from the very beginning when we met, we're not going to fall in love with real estate at this point because there are too many, um, you know, too many great options out there, and we want to go down the one that is going to be the best and uh, best opportunity for the city. But also, we're on a timeline. You know, our window's open right now. What is your timeline to find a location? Um, you know, if we can do this and get land optioned as soon as possible, talking weeks or months, not years, that's our window. Because it's a rare time in, in Major League Baseball when, uh, just to quote Commissioner Manfred, there's two teams that uh, have not stabilized their ballpark situations. That's Oakland A's and the Tampa, Tampa Bay Rays. Mm -hmm. And then he's talked that as soon as he gets them settled, he's going to expand by two teams. If we can help him get one of those teams settled, terrific. And if it's not, if it's an expansion team, that's fine too. So we want to give him options because we think that helps him. And there's a fifth and sixth site you mentioned to KGW on Sports Sunday that outside the city limits? Yes, there is one outside that we have already optioned on. And there You're are telling a couple us what that more. One is yet? I cannot yet. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if it were just me, Laura, I'd just spill the beans. But <laughs> I'm speaking on talk, behalf you know? of other people. Right, exactly. I'm giving you pretty much straight talk. But on that kind of stuff, um, in, but it is outside the city limits, but fairly close in. So the Atlanta Braves were a team that did that recently because the downtown parks are the iconic game-changing parks. That's what we want. But if it starts to look like our timeline's gonna slip or we uh, stand to lose out, we wanted to have those other sites outside um, that, could, that could handle this. And like, as I mentioned, 
the Braves broke the mold a little bit when they left Turner Field and went to Cobb County in Atlanta and opened SunTrust Park, and it's been a huge success at how they've done it. And so it is an option. Well, there's some big political challenges too. Um, there's an effort around the Rose Quarter called the Albina Vision to invest mm -hmm. in the African American community that was displaced in the Rose Quarter. They want to right the wrongs, restore the wealth of the Black community that was gentrified out, and they don't think, at least from what I've read, think baseball fits into that vision. How does your vision stack up with their vision? Well, we, we've met with um, some representatives from Albina Vision, and um, you know, it was it was positive. I think that when it, we looked at their plans for the area, they looked at our plans, and I think together there could be a, a meshing there. And um, we're all sensitive to what happened there, and not necessarily with the, the, the you know the Moda Center, but back when the Coliseum was constructed. And to a lot of us, to our shame, weren't aware of the complete story. So to meet with them and hear about it, it was it was terrific to hear. So um, and to get educated on it. Uh, so yeah, we think we could we could certainly help in there and and provide maybe an economic anchor that would bring in ancillary development. And we've been uh, very outward with talking about housing, and we know and that's that's a, part of your whole plan is yeah. some affor uh, not affordable but workforce workforce housing. housing yeah. What is that? Workforce housing is affordable housing. I mean, it's it's housing that when you think about a ballpark and high rise condos being two and three million dollars. We know that for the mayor and for the city, something that is needed is that affordable housing because there's such a housing crunch, not just here, but up and down the, the West Coast. Now, would public money be involved in that component? Not, that's not in our plan, no. Um, and we have developers and, and, and master planners that we have, uh, have talked to, and they are very excited about the opportunity to do this. So that's a huge, and it depends on which property. So we came out initially with ESCO and PPS and said 8,000 units of affordable housing is what we said. For those sites, yes. For others, if we have the room, yes, but it is certainly a priority. Now, where are you on the PPS discussions? Because you'd have to move their headquarters. Where are you on that? We are working with them. They've been terrific, but we know that they have uh, priorities they have to hit as well. So we are they are one of the properties we are in discussions with right now, and um, we love that site, uh, and we love the way it is. It is zoned, it's close to the Moda Center. We know, and obviously I was with the Blazers for so long, that area, you know, in the summertime, when I would host shows down there and drive out on a summer evening and there's nobody around down there, I think that that could activate that entire area and everybody would win from a development like that. I want to talk to you more about the ESCO site, also what a stadium might look like, but we need to take a break, so we'll talk about that. Baseball coming to Portland in two minutes.